Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Few weeks ago, I posted a video about the new Skytop Niskindi Indoor Theme Park. Hope you all enjoy the video. For those who are new here, you can watch the video at the link in the description or from up here. You can subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to stay up to the date on my travel videos. I went to the Gindin two years back, and by that time, first world indoor theme park still existed. I will share the link to this video in the description and up here too. After having my fun time with the new Sky Chopnis Gindin, I was left with something missing from the new theme park. So, in this video, I will make a comparison between the new and the old Gindin theme park. I will compare them in four categories. Which one is more theme? Which one have good variations of attractions? Which attractions are more fun? And finally, which one has better integration and layout? And ultimately, I will give you an answer on which theme park is better. Well, at least in my opinion. So let's get it started. First, we have the first world indoor theme park. This indoor theme park is situated entirely inside of the First World Plaza, and it was closed on 2017. The construction of Gindi Skytropolis started in 2017, and the new theme park is finally open to public by December 2018. Which one is more team than others? So let's check what is the team for First World Indoor Theme Park. We have America team, Italy Venice team, Paris team, London team, Malaysia team, and Cartoon Superhero team. And finally, there are many creative place statues. This place such as Superman breaking out from the wall, inverted car crash out from wall, and the dinosaur out from wall. On the other hand, the Skytropolis Gindin has the Paris France team, Parrot team, and, hmm, and, and, well, this is pretty obvious now, right? I personally think the new Skytropolis theme park really lacking of team if compared to the first world indoor theme park. I will give the win to the first world indoor theme park. <laughs> the next is our second comparison category. Which one has good variation of attractions? First World Indoor Theme Park attraction divided into children ride, family ride, and studio ride. Sky Chopper also divided into same category. Red the Paris is same as Loop the Loop. First the World's Carousel is being upgraded into Sky Chopper's Lawyer's Carousel. Children bumper cars are available in the name of Boom Boom Bob. Busy bug, Ferris wheel, and mini train were recorded into Warney Bug, Skyscraper, and the Corporate Express. Elevated ride in First World Team Park are Reindeer Cruiser, Moro Rail, and the Rail Float. While the elevated ride in Sky Top Place is not open, but there will be in form of chariot, cruiser, and a soaring ship. Steel ride such as adult bumper cars still are available and has been renamed to bumper boats. Roller coaster Euro Express is being replaced by Super Glider. There are secret attractions such as Expedition Wars, Sky Venture, and Rainforest Splash Pool did not make it to Skytropolis. Ripley's Believe It or Not, Bowling Center has been reopened but not within Skytropolis combined. The Haunted Adventure has been reversed into Zombie Outbreak. Fantasy World is upgraded to become Big Top. Some new attractions from Skytropolis are Balloon Race, Disco, Sky Tower, Spin Crazy, and the Power Surge are welcome new addition to the theme park. I must say Skytropolis did well in adding more fun attractions to compensate with the loss of some most signature attractions of the first world theme park. So a draw for both theme park for this category. Oh. Here come to the third category, which attractions are more fun. For those similar ride with renewed name for Skytropolis, they are equally fun. For elevated ride, I believe the old Gending theme park will provide much more fun than the new one. Why is that? 
Sketch open his chariot cruiser from the maps. It looks only cruising around the small section of the park. Well, Rio Cruiser cover almost half of the First World Team Park. With Rio Cruiser, you will be passing by Statue of Liberty, Dinosaur, Inverted Car, and Venice, and without a doubt, a spectacular view along the rise. The Venice Grand Canal alone is easily the best attractions. The Euro Express also has the similar advantage, where the track passed by Petora's Twin Tower, Eiffel Tower, and cut into Venice Grand Canal. Meanwhile, the Super Glider is self-contained in its own area. Super Glider could be more intense than Euro Express, thus a most real fun ride. Spin Crazy of Sketch Hopkins also provide new thrill experience that the old one don't have. This is a hard choice. First World Attraction give me a wonderful team fun, while Sketch Hopkins give me a exhilarating thrill. For this, I choose the First World for the win, based on the reason I'm seeking fun and not thrill. <laughs> Now for the final category, which one has better integration and layout? Let's bring up to the map. Have a look. This is the first world map. Actually, first world is planned in such a way that there are plenty exploration vertically. There is a stage for performance in the center of the park. Going up to the escalator beside the stage, we can go to the movie theater. There are also shops integrated into a two stories of tastefully designed shop lot. The haunted adventure is integrated perfectly here with an innovative lift to transport you to the haunted house. There are also bridges along the Grand Canal, and the higher vantage points bring you near view of the elevated gondola cruising along the sky. Going up to higher floor also bring you to Bonnie Center, Expedition War, and Slow World. The water team rainforest splash pool is just a stone's throw away from Paris team and carousel. Let's bring up the map of Sketchopolis and have a look at this photo. Well, this should sum up the comparison. I have satisfaction when exploring First World Theme Park. I appreciate the vertical development of First World as the inner child of me wants me to go up and down, left to right, exploring the places. Another win for the First World. I personally feel that the Skytopolis setting is a bit dark and gloomy. Yes, the LED and the screen on the wall are fantastic, and it could change easily the mood by loading different colors in the videos to the screen. First World, on the other hand, rely on a lot of light and ambient light to set the mood. The presence of ambient light light up the overall mood, making me feel happier. Cartoon, electronic game, and war graphics just doesn't excite me. First World has everything I loved: the Statue of Liberty, riding bike, Superman boat, and others really resonate to my soul. Skytopolis is awesome on its own, with jaw-dropping graphics, LED screen on the wall to fake day and light sky from the ceiling, and many other modern state-of-the-art technology. But it just doesn't resonate with me. But let me conclude that the first world indoor theme park is the better indoor theme park. What do you think of my view on the comparison of both theme parks? Give me a like on this video if you are agreeing with me. If you disagree, let me know the reason in the comment below. Subscribe me if you want to watch more fun travel video.